Hey guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 270, featuring a retrospective of a game called Anachronox, a game published in 2001 by Ion Storm and designed by Tom Hall, who I just interviewed in the previous three episodes of Matt Chat. It's a fantastic game and we've got a lot to cover. So without further ado, here is Anachronox. And here we go at long last, guys. I know some of you guys have been requesting that I cover this game for years now. Namely, 2001's Anachronox, produced and designed primarily by Mr. Tom Hall, who I just had the pleasure of interviewing. And if you haven't seen those episodes, uh, go back, look at the past few weeks of Matt Chat, been interviewing Tom. And I think you should watch those before you see this review because uh, it gives you pretty good insight into the type of man that Tom is. And you'll see how his personality is really woven all throughout this, this game and really is really what makes the game special. It's really all about Mr. Hall, so now go back and look at those if you haven't seen it. Now this game uh, is considered widely as the best CRPG you've probably never played or maybe even never heard of. Oh, uh, how could that be? Well, there's lots of bugs and glitches and the graphics engine was a bit dated at the time. Things of that, of that sort were going on. Uh, Mr. Hall himself has said that the problem was that even though they spent millions of dollars making this game, they only spent $50,000 advertising it. So that's a good explanation for why it might be obscure. Of course, uh, it didn't help that it was uh, released soon after uh, John Romero's Daikatana from Ion Storm, a really high-profile disaster, uh, which probably tarnished... Ion Storm's reputation a lot, sort of set the deck against, stack the deck of uh, against this game, even though it really has nothing in common with Daikatana. But as we'll see, there's a lot to enjoy and savor about this game, particularly if you can get beyond the the bugs and the glitches and the fact that the uh, planned sequel was never released. I have uh, more to say about that later. But anyway, let's talk about the the positives. Well, by far the biggest asset this game has going for it is the story and the characters. Really memorable characters and the type of storytelling is, uh, I would describe as cinematic. I mean, look at all these camera, interesting camera movements, uh, camera work, cinematography, if you will. Uh, it's got a very filmic, film-like, filmic? <laughs> very film-like uh, feel to it. It's pretty neat. And, you know, just look at all the little subtle body language and gestures and emotions that are, you know, they don't have to just give you this big wall of text to look at. Uh, they just, they do a really good job within the confines, limitations of this engine of telling a really good story and telling it well. Our main character here is a detective named Sly Boots. As you can see, he has a little money trouble. Boots. Or next time. I mix and match. Hit me. Hasn't there been enough of that? Have a heart. You want a dentist, kids? Anyone else throwing me out of windows lately? Come clean with the debt, Sly. Dead is no slouch, and he's got muscle. He'll collect one way or the other. Hey. Money's tight. As soon as it rains. So as you can see, this it's got a sort of a film noir like vibe to it, that hard boiled detective fiction. You know, it kinda of reminds me of a, a bit of Blade Runner with an old Humphrey Bogart movie with a lot of Bruce Campbell thrown in. I actually thought uh, our character Boots here really reminds me of Ash from the Evil Dead Army of Darkness series. And at times I almost thought it was uh, Bruce Campbell doing the voice work. But uh, anyways, really cool character. You can definitely relate to him easily, which is cool. But uh, unfortunately, this game has a, a very long wind-up. <laughs> you know, it takes a couple hours before it really starts to get interesting. And that yeah, can be fatal. A lot of people just play it for a while and then think it's boring and quit. 
without ever getting to the the good stuff so you definitely have to be willing to invest some time but i mean consider the imagination that went into this like the uh this uh the mouse pointer that you use in the game is actually a little ship with this uh artificial intelligence inside named fatima uh, being shown here and she was your secretary in life she died and uh Somehow I got all her memories and personality put on the chip. And she's your companion. What? Pretty cool concept. Anything on sender net? Nothing you're sober enough for. I'm just waiting for business to pick up. What's with the attitude? For one, I'm sick of being dead. And second, I'm tired of watching you drink your life away. When did you become such a bum? I'm not a bum. Prove it. Bums don't have offices. An office isn't a storage room in a cheap bar, Boots. Hey. It's time for a new line of work. Forget it, sweetheart. I'm a detective. It's what I do. Then go out and do it. I'm always here if you ever get off your butt and make useful. So basically what this game is, it's a combination of adventure game and Japanese role-playing game uh, style combat. Uh, there's also quite a few arcade sequences uh, tossed into the mix, little mini-games. Uh, and it was a mix that uh, worked well for some people, but it was also got uh, pissed a lot of people off. Like the adventure game purists didn't like the combat. The RPG folks didn't like the relatively simplistic combat and leveling system. They, you know, role-playing games typically have more to offer in those departments. So, uh, you know, it alienated people from both camps, at least the, the purists. A lot of people thought the, the arcade stuff was kind of a distraction. Uh, other people liked that part the best, so <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to please everybody uh, with any kind of game. Uh, basically, like any of those old Japanese role-playing games, uh, we have to go around and talk to everybody that we see <laughs> multiple times usually, um, to try to get hints, clues, and uh, vital information. Fortunately, unlike a lot of those Japanese role-playing games, uh, the dialogue in this game is great. And a lot of the things that characters say are really funny. Just laugh out loud, hilarious. Yeah, so this, this little pet petting the time mender bunny rabbit looking creature. Another good example of how they had something like the save game interface, right? It's, it would seem like that has nothing to do with the game, right? It's just a utility function of the interface actually uh, incorporated that into the story. So these little bunny rabbits are what they call time menders and they experience time in a different way than humans. You know, they can see everything that's happened before and is going to happen after. So they're sort of detached from the space-time continuum, I guess. And so when you save and load, you're kind of freezing time in their memory. And then when you reload, you're just picking up at an earlier point. So it's, it's, I don't know if it completely works, maybe I don't have it quite figured out myself, but I like the, at any rate, at any rate, I like the idea of trying to explain the game interface in terms of the, the game universe. That, that's pretty cool. Lots of examples of that. I mean, they really uh, got imaginative. You know, I was reading on the Wikipedia page, apparently Tom Hall got the idea for this game in the shower, and I guess, uh, the shower was a very inspirational place for him because he had a whiteboard and a sound recording device installed in his bathroom so that when inspiration struck during the old lather, rinse, repeat, he could take time out to uh, jot down his game ideas. I hope it didn't affect his hygiene too much. You know, one thing uh, when you play this game, make sure that you're not playing it on a widescreen resolution because uh, everything will look sort of stretched out. What you really want is... Uh, Standard resolution. You can uh, get that just by selecting the windowed mode. Otherwise, you might have to go and fiddle with your uh, graphics card settings. But if it looks all stretched out when you try to play it, just keep that in mind. Yeah, so this is our office. That's a pretty big couch. Yeah? And here's our PAL. P-A-L. He'll be our companion later on, but right now he lacks energy. <laughs> quite literally. Ah, and here we go, our first little mini-game. So each character, including Sly, has his, uh, it's called World Skill. And these, uh, you can upgrade these later. But basically they let the characters interact with the world in different ways. Uh, this guy can pick locks. 
some of the other people I'll show you later can hack things or uh, even talk to people. So this one here is it's pretty challenging. Actually, it's not. It's just kind of a high-low game, <laughs> but it's timed. <laughs> uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you can get right to the end, and if you don't get it, you got to start all the way over. And they do randomize the numbers every time. So I don't know how anybody would ever memorize a combination that changed. Uh, but I guess we won't think too hard about that. And then, then they tease you with this master pick lock. So they know you're not going to be able to do this yet. So I guess they just put it in to uh, give you something to look forward to later. You know, eventually you'll be able to upgrade your pick. And then I guess you'll have more time to, to pick this one. But it's pretty much impossible for now. So really all we're supposed to do here at the beginning is get the camera from the office, get our money, and then uh, go find a lead on a job. Now uh, there's this old APE arcade machine. There's a little inside joke for you. So that's they called the programming language for this game, Anac or the scripting language, Ape, or Anaconox programming language. Not sure how they got the E in there. <laughs> but one thing you'll definitely notice is uh, Tom loves his inside jokes. And here's uh, Travis Kelly. We talk to him enough, and uh, he'll show us a drawing. Uh, okay, I sort of... No. <laughs> Just, uh, okay, don't really get it. You know how frequently, you're frequently going to get that feeling as you play this. Because, you know, we don't know the inside jokes. I guess you could probably do some research and, and find out uh, where these references are coming from. But I could see how that might put some people off. I actually find it charming myself. It's just makes it unique. Alright, so I'm about to get into my first combat, if you want to call it that. Now, totally unlike certain games, <coughs> Skyrim, <coughs> uh, this, instead of making you feel like a god right at the start, they really want You're to rub it in how a big of a wussy you are. Was it something I said? Yeah, to my sister. You know, there's a special introductory offer at the Temple of Beating up the street. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to brush up on those self-defense skills, don't you think? Yeah, I think we should probably go visit the Whack Master. <laughs> One thing that I just love about this game is the actual the city of Anachronox. It's just fascinating to think about this floating city in space. It's really a wild concept. The uh, city itself is always transforming and transitioning, they call it. So it really feels uh, sort of coherent in a way that not a lot of games are able to uh, to capture that that feeling of being a, a real place. Now this game definitely achieves that, and really with, without even the the best graphic engine to work with or anything, uh, it's just you know really says a lot I think for the design of the game. Now here's coming up here is a really uh, Blade Runner esque sequence. Transition complete. I hate this place. Yeah, well, I could imagine other people probably hate it too, especially the kind that tend to get motion sickness from playing games like this with all <laughs> moving upside down and rotating. Uh, the three, they, you know, they've, they've really got this uh, three-dimensional level layout, uh, which can make it really difficult sometimes uh, when you're trying to learn your way around. Fortunately, there's lots of ways to get directions. There's even a little uh, floating computer thing that'll take you places. And there are also taxis you can just click on and 
right around in. I didn't realize that at first, but I looked at a little uh, hint site and they were mentioning them. There's another. Anytime you see one of those little bunny rabbits, you might want to save. Because <laughs> they are usually put those right in front of places where you might die. Oh, Whack Master Jax. Yeah, that guy's uh, <laughs> pretty roided up. Yeah, so there's another little device, a little hacking interface data link thing. Won't be able to do anything with that until I get my pal in the party. Pre-Mabel. And you get the idea that they really thought about everything. So they couldn't just have old Grandmaster Quackmaster Jack down there have to go up around and <laughs> through and around again and all. <laughs> He's in here. There he is. Now, this guy's quite a hoot. Whackmaster Jack. He'll teach us how to uh, do the combat. You know, and again, they didn't just give you the tutorial out of context. And they, they gave you a good reason to want to learn how to do combat after you got your butt spanked. Really drove it home that you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> This, this dialogue here is, is hilarious. There's really no dull, boring characters. <laughs> Especially the little, the pal is just hilarious. Love that, love that guy. And uh, Whack Master Jack's a lot of fun too. And there's a lot of uh, riffing on the standard Dungeons and Dragons style role-playing game. So it's, you've got might, agility, and wisdom. And then uh, something called beat and beat block. Uh, beefiness instead of strength or uh, melee damage and they got these sort of unusual terminology for all this now Tom has said that a lot of the inspiration for this game came from Chrono Trigger really classic a console uh, Japanese role-playing game lots of fun uh, but it has a lot in common uh, with this game is the way the combat lay is laid out with the timers and these special animations that play every time you attack. It can get a little tedious at times though after you've seen the same sort of, you know, handful of combat animations for the thousandth time. There is a way you can cheat though. You can activate the debug console and uh, speed up the game, double or maybe even triple the speed of it. I didn't really, I didn't find it so annoying that I, you know, went to that length, but it is there. So just be aware if you start to get, if you start to find the combat tedious, there are ways to speed it up. All right, so here we go. We got our old Viston pistol, and our robot is going to uh, smile at us as we take pot shots at his head. And so there's your battle icons, fairly straightforward. So the combat has gotten criticized by some people. It seems to be something that you either love or hate. Uh, probably, though, you'll just be like me and think it's it works. It's serviceable, not particularly exciting. You know, it, it does kind of stretch out time-wise. Sometimes you get, you know, four or five bad guys and just uh, it just can take a while to get through the combat. You know, I've never, I've never been a big fan of these uh, battle animations. You know, it's, it looks nice, but it just tends to, uh, to drag out the, the fight. So, I wish there was a way to skip them, or at least to speed them up. I mean, as I mentioned before, you can cheat and uh, speed up the combat that way, but you know, I much prefer a, a way to just to bypass them. But anyway, <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. I think we're definitely seeing that. Oh. Yeah, and it looks like we have encountered our first something I a bug. Yeah. Oh, that's a My terrible sister. glitch. What the hell is happening? <laughs> oh, maybe I did get hit in the head really hard. <laughs> anyway, I'll go ahead and just skip forward and show you some of the later game. There's a special introductory. This is a couple hours in here. I've picked up my first companion little dwarf guy named Grumpos. Really unusual character. I think right when you meet him, you, you start to realize this this isn't going to be the cliche game at all. I mean, there is... I mean, they, they have flipped these cliches completely on their heads. 
Yeah, so here's this <laughs> door lord. <laughs> what do you do? I'm a door lord. Yeah, that sounds like uh, sounds like something Tom would come up with. So I get to go underneath there. Now once you get these uh, other characters, you can just hit tab, instantly switch between them. You can also put gear on them. They, they each have their own kind of weapon that they prefer. So that gives you opportunities for uh, pretty unique team configurations. Unfortunately, the contrast, I should, probably should have ratcheted up the uh, <laughs> the gamma a bit more on this. It's just, I, think, I don't think it's supposed to be this dark. But yeah, I got turned around in this game so many times. It's all these damn elevators everywhere and multiple levels. And you can uh, get quite difficult to find your way around. It really, really needs a an auto map. A little uh, map in the corner somewhere would have been really nice. Okay, what do I need to do to... There we go. <laughs> yeah, they love their elevator sequences. Yeah, these can get old, too, after about the 50th time. You've seen it. Which, unfortunately, if you're like me and you keep uh, going the wrong way, you probably will see the elevator animation <laughs> 50 times. Okay, so we're down in these weird tunnels and uh, one of the things that's great about this story arc it starts off really simple and it just keeps ratcheting on more and more mystery and get the consequences get bigger and bigger I mean, it's just that sort of classic save the universe epic you know scale adventure but you don't get all that right from the, the beginning and as I said it takes a while to uh, to really warm up but man once it gets going you don't want to have to stop playing to make a video like this one. So this guy. Okay, cave crawlers are down. Get my little dance. You know, I, I, I like games that do the little victory dance. And I love that, that little battle booty screen. Man, that just uh, really looks like it was created on the Amiga. Got this Amiga vibe to it. Uh, Amiga aesthetic. Sort of good old Psygnosis style. Yeah, just looking here at my stats. You can, later on, you'll have a lot more stuff to play around with here. But uh, let's go ahead and move forward. I'll show you the first boss fight. So you probably picked up the, the story elements from before about how this is, all the stuff was created by this long vanished or long extinct alien race. And, uh, we don't, there's a lot of mystery surrounding Anachronox and this uh, Mysterium. <laughs> That's an appropriate name, Mysterium. Uh, so part of the game is learning more about, you know, what all this stuff means and, and what it really does. I'm not going to spoil any of the surprises for you. Oh, man. Now that... <laughs> That's a pretty uh, interesting boss. I'm guessing it doesn't want to talk. So, what's it called? Uh, I can beat him. Grumpos, the dwarf, has a melee attack, and Boots has his pistols, ranged attacks. The downside of the melee attack, though, is sometimes you have to move around to get into position. I'm, gonna, I'm guessing that the way this battleground is laid out here, it's probably got something to do with moving to those different pads. Oh, he actually, uh, I guess when he does that chest thumping thing, he actually kills himself. Well, that's respectable damage from old boots there. And there's that little twirly whirly, whirl a twirl uh, fighting maneuver from Grumpos. Yeah, I'm guessing I probably don't want to be standing on one of those platforms when he does that. I wonder how many. You know, there's no health bar or anything above this monster, so I'm not really sure how much uh, health he's got left. You know, that, that would have been nice. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, I need to... I think I probably should move away from the tile. Hopefully I'll have enough time to uh, do that before he does that slam. So, yeah, the movement's kind of strange how you do that. You just double... You click on the move icon and then you... Uh, it'll give you some different options there. 
you think you have to click on the actual spot on the screen, but it's uh, it's all in that menu, so <laughs> don't get fooled and fooled by that. It took me a while to figure that out. Okay, this thing is still kicking. Well, looks like my guys are at full health though, so he's not really doing any damage to me. Could it be this easy? Now yeah, that's some more good camera work there. The the angles they've chosen really show you how small your guys are compared to this behemoth. Yeah, see there's another I need to move again. <laughs> Almost sort of curious what happens if he slams you. I guess it, maybe it one shots you. Alright. Again, no no idea how much health this thing has left. But uh, maybe this could go on all night. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's still there. Maybe uh, a couple more attack sequences. We might have to go all the way around this, this base. I don't know. I love the symmetry of this, this level design here. That's kind of cool, too. The camera shakes every time he thumps his chest. I don't know if eventually these platforms are going to uh, disintegrate completely if he keeps hitting them. It's definitely got that classic JRPG big scope battle. Oh. What? There's no... Okay. <laughs> Straight to the battle booty screen there. That's some heel grease. Okay, so the death sequence is after the booty call screen. Ah, uh, poor rock monster. Okay. <laughs> uh, I thought that would be the end of the, the level there. I'm not sure what I'm getting supposed to do now. Okay, I guess I can't get around there. Have to go back out and explore some more and figure out what I, what I need to do to complete my quest. I guess I should explore some more. These freaky uh, plants growing on the walls. Man, what a washout. I busted my knuckles for this. It looks like it's made from Mysterium. The same material Mystech is made from. We've got to get this back to my lab immediately. Um, okay. <laughs> guess there's a little glitch there. Just kind of jumped into that. Look, boys. Losers. Well, well, well. If it ain't my favorite butter and egg, man. Hey, Detta. Here you're moving up in the world. Your charm on legs, Crash. Too bad your mouth's smarter than the rest of you. <laughs> now your stomach's smart, too. Thanks for the education. I haven't seen you all year, Sylvester. Nice coat. Remind me why I'm keeping you alive. Kill me and you'll never see the money. You're dead. <laughs> oh no, that's pocket change compared to my numbers now. Try again. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. Nostalgia. You bring to mind my humble beginnings. One must stay grounded despite one's success. And you, give me the stone. Stone? What stone? Come on, Grumps, give it to him. You don't know who you're dealing with. I know a two-bit thug in a fancy suit when I see one. He'll have to kill me for it. Oh. Boop. Thanks much, Sylvester. Whatever this is will look swank in my collection. Poot, schedule a dinner with Mr. Boots for the end of the Poot? week. Some place nice. Not Bregulin. I hate Bregulin. I may be a sentimental old fool, Sly, but if the money isn't mine by dessert, we'll break out the saws. <laughs> Bottle up and go, boys. Sunny Funnies, Friday at Dusk Hour, don't forget. Yeah, it's the old let us do all the work and then take the prize game. 
Honestly, detective. Moron, I'm gonna kill you! That stone was in my hands, and you rolled over for those goombas without a thought. Look, old man, you hired me to keep you safe. Those guys were gonna dust you. Rubbish. We could have taken those ruffians on easy. You cost me a stone. Stone's bones. It's time to settle up, Cupcake. What? After that? Forget it! Hey, you hired me to keep you safe. You didn't mention anything about that stone, so cough up the birds. Ah, piss. Yeah, very funny. Where's the rest? What rest? That's your fee. A hundred bucks? This won't even pay my bar tab. Well then maybe next time you'll pay more attention to your fee up front. I'm not a rich man, Mr. Boots. Take it with a smile or walk. Fine, fine, I'll take it. Wait a minute. You're going? Of course I'm going. This case is closed. Do you have any idea how much money you're walking away from? There's energy dormant in every slag of Mystech. If we figure out a way to activate it, we'll never have to worry about money again. What do you need me for? Weren't you mad at me a second ago? Well, I don't need you in particular. But you've got a flair for fighting, and everyone else I know is dead. What you need is a change of venue. When we come back, you'll have enough money to pay off your debt and start a new life. I'm listening. Planet Sunder. There's a brilliant scientist there who's thinking along the same lines I am. If I knock heads with her, we might just pull this off and make a bundle. Okay, I'll take the case. As long as the egghead doesn't get a cut. Sold. And I want more than a hundred bucks. You'll get plenty more. And I'm in charge, you hear me? You're a danger to yourself. No, piffle. And stop hitting me with that thing, or I'm gonna belt you back. Ow! I mean it. I love the dialogue in this game. Alright, so let's see what else I can show you here. Alright, here's one of my favorite parts. Pal. Get to revive Pal. Pal. I found the Pal. battery for him, and now we can add him to our party. Hey, settle down, Hotshot. Battery comes out as easily as it went in. <laughs> no, please don't, Mr. Boots. I'm a good boy. Don't turn me off now. Hey, you're acting pretty funny. You burn out a circuit or something? No, sir, Mr. Boots. I'm a half a snack. Oh, yeah. Then let's burn rubber, kid. Two on the town, just like the old days. I'm not paying extra for this. <laughs> I'm not paying extra for this. Oh, piffle. That uh, re weird, freaky uh, voice performance there. It's so appropriate for our pal. Uh, I bet you probably recognized that actor. <laughs> I'll let you look that up, but uh, if you've been watching Mad Chat lately, you probably know who that is. All right, so let's uh, move on then. So each of my characters has a, a special ability I told you about. Part of the fun is figuring out where you can use those abilities. Now, Grumpo's here, his power is yammering. This has got to be one of the weirdest, and really one of the most creative uh, ideas I've seen in a role-playing game. So you have to basically keep the oxygen flowing to his lungs. And you just tap on the arrow keys. It's real simple, but oddly, it's, uh, it's quite fun. And the, <laughs> uh, the stuff this guy says I mean huh? <laughs> it's, uh, it's so far out of uh, it's just bizarre <laughs> so just wait till I'm done here and see this the stuff that Grumpos tells him A three-day-old geese turd that's been sitting in your sister's left cheek for two months. 
Ew. <laughs> God. What the? Oh, man. I don't want to ever, ever see inside <laughs> Tom's mind. Yeah, this is absolutely hilarious dialogue every time he uses this ability. <laughs> Believe me, man, you never know. Never know what he's going to say. <laughs> really good, really good writing. You know, I just thought there's just been very few games with, with characters that seem uh, this original. I mean, it's just, it's just a slam dunk performance. Peanuts and monkey farts. <laughs> I think I'll start using that. That could be my new catchphrase. Oh, are we back to, to glitch mode? Holy no! <laughs> you have ruined me. Yeah, it's kind of funny how the the ticketing system works in this game. It's, it's random how much you pay for your flight. <laughs> Seems uh, maybe a little bit of social commentary. So anyway, I'm going to have to get some more money and come back. But, uh, that's so Grumpos. Unforgettable, unforgettable character. You know, there's even some meta commentary in this in the game, uh, like this idea that the characters are self-aware that they're just characters in a game. <laughs> this guy's pretty wacky with his stick there. We're all just puppets in a game. I talked to him. He keeps hitting me with his staff. You know, there's a lot of thwacking in this game. <laughs> you know, somebody's always getting hit with a stick. You know, again, probably shouldn't read too much into the psychoanalytical side of it. Let's see, am I even at the right terminal? <laughs> it looks like we are. <laughs> okay, so we'll get treated to another one of those 2001 A Space Odyssey-like sequences. Really love those. I will say one of my criticisms of the game is is the music. You know, it's not that it's bad, but it's just kind of bland. You know, it feels like that's two or three uh, synthesizer chords just over and over again. It gets uh, rather monotonous. It's kind of dreary, really. Which maybe that's what they were going for, but uh, it just doesn't really work for me. It's kind of weird they don't have any music for this sequence. They obviously spent a lot of time creating all these models and animating all this. I will give them credit though. They definitely do a good job. I like these uh, ship designs. And I like the uh, the camera work here. Virtual camera. It just has a very tactile feel to it. It seems realistic somehow. It's also kind of intriguing, the idea that uh, in the future they'll just pack you into these sort of train cars and then you'll just <laughs> be forklifted into the ship. Uh, so there's a nice establishing shot there. And boom! Now doesn't that thing look freaky? Well, that's something they did really well in Star Trek The Next Generation was just constantly reminding you that all this is taking place in a, in a ship. You know, and this game does a lot of that same evocative stuff, too. They don't let you forget that you're in space and that you're in an alien environment. I mean, considering all this was put together by a 15-person crew, if I'm recalling correctly, I mean, uh, if you've done any 3D work, you know the... <laughs> the time it must have taken to create all this. And even like those little animated displays. And it's very impressive. You know, it's really easy just to look at this, ah, the graphics seem blanky. And just totally have no clue and appreciation for the, the work and the craft that went into this. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I mean, look how different this place looks than the city that the game starts in. And just completely different aesthetic. Salad is free today! <laughs> whoop de doo <laughs> Hate salad. What's the plan, Stan? We need to buy two tickets to Sundra and get this show on the road. Hey, how about a quick pit stop at the Red Light District while we're here? 
Will you pull that chin out of the gutter and put your mind to business? Bell Curves and Sundry is much classier. <laughs> How could you not love this guy? Oh, it's great, great, great character. Okay, let's <laughs> move for, move on a little bit. <laughs> There's a lot of riffing <laughs> that goes on, on in this game. Lots of pop culture references. Some of it funny, some of it bizarre, some of it oddly in a surreal kind of fashion uh, appropriate. I'm guessing Tom must be a pretty f big fan of the Beatles. <laughs> it just goes on and on. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I I just love stuff like this. Not for everybody. <laughs> you have the kind of personality, that kind of demented state of uh, mind where you can actually appreciate humor like this, you're going to love the game. <laughs> it's full of it. I thought I'd show you Pal's minigame here, Comp Talk. So what I have to do is connect those, uh, I have to make these little wires or pipe pipings to connect those flashing or blinking uh, lights, one at the top, one at the bottom. And it probably looks easier than it is. Uh, something about having that timer <laughs> just kind of screws with you, your coordination. I mean, it's, it goes quick, too. I mean, look at that. Failure! Fortunately, with this one, unlike the, uh, the locksmithing, or the uh, picking locks, it always seems to be the same pattern every time, so if you can just remember uh, where you got stuck last time, you can pick it back up again, get through it. But yeah, that's fun. I mean, sometimes I've done this one, and it has gotten, like, that last little <laughs> flashing, uh, you know, the timer's almost out, and I just, ooh, just barely get it in there in time, and <laughs> it's, it's kind of, a uh, it's, it's uh, funny how that can be so exciting. Just a simple little mini game like that. Now I think there's a little. What is this? Uh, yeah, you kind of have to keep your eye open because sometimes you'll find these uh, heel grease tubes. Sometimes you actually find uh, better weapons and uh, <laughs> shields and like incredible stuff just lying around. Very hard to see spot. Then I guy's gonna get stuck there for a second. Ah, oh, and look what we've got there. Tom is a man <laughs> who appreciates rats almost as much as I do. So in this game, you don't actually fight the rats, but the rats are actually the source of your power. <laughs> the gloatants. <laughs> oh, man. It's so cool. Oh, man. I want a gloatant. You guys still got time. It's a couple of weeks to Christmas if somebody wants to send me a gloatant. I'd very much like to have one. I mean, wouldn't that have been a cool, uh, is that, that, you know, if they ever do a Anachronox 2, you should do a Kickstarter bonus item of, of Glodens. They, like, light up in the dark. Remember those, uh, Glowworm toys from way back? I think it was, like, back in the 80s. <laughs> My sister had one of those. It wouldn't take much to transform that into a Glodent. Just saying. See, I think at this point of the video, there's probably, like, two people uh, that still watch. <laughs> <laughs> if if them you know so you're a very special if you have made it to this point <laughs> you're either like a serious anachronox fan in which case you probably hate my guts because i didn't get something right or, or whatever or you just uh got nothing better to do which means you are liberated <laughs> yeah, keep telling yourself that as i blast these uh snakes trying not again trying not to read too much into the Freudian implications of... No, I, I just... I, I don't want to go there. I just don't want to... I, uh. Okay, we def uh, deflated these pipe mimics. Man, pipe mimics. I, uh, battle booty. Ah! Uh. <laughs> of course, there would be a clown. <laughs> oh, I love clowns. You know, clowns get such a bad rep. They're always portrayed as a uh, sinister somehow. I mean, come on. <laughs> he's, he's, he's just jumping up and down back there. <laughs> a romantic doctor. Yeah, there's lots of side quests in the game, and you have to pay attention because uh, 
There's the uh, quest tracker only keeps track of your main quest. If you want to do these side lines, you have to uh, take notes. And I've noticed something else too about the, there's a lot of uh, failed romances going on here. A lot of depressed people that they're having different kinds of uh, romantic problems. They're dissatisfied with their job. They're, you know, really depressed. Which uh, I kind of wonder if maybe that reflects some of what was going on there at uh, Ion Storm and, and with Eidos. <laughs> Is that, I just think uh, there's some interesting things. You know, maybe you could read too much into it, but there's... You know, it's... Uh, it's not just hilarity, back-to-back -back laughs. I mean, there's some, there's some kind of sad stuff in the game. Really, uh, kind of depresses you. It depresses you sometimes, and then will make you really laugh. I was trying to think about the appeal of this kind of uh, mixing of uh, sad and comedy. And I was thinking maybe like Douglas Adams... Or uh, the Red Dwarf show, and like and Hitchhiker's Guide, you know all of those kind of uh, shows and books. There's this, it's kind of yeah. There's there's laugh out loud, hilarious. You know, you're you're out of control, uh, laughing one minute, but then there's also this really deep, like depressive, depressing, uh, dep <laughs> depressing. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> depressing quality to it as well, right? It's it's like this real deep melancholy, and like everything's going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of weird to, to have both of those elements in here, but I definitely see it in this game. I think that's, uh, you know, people that are really uh, impacted by the game, I'm sure they, they pick up on that. So one of the things I like about this uh, this interface is they put the characters' faces down there and they'll light up if they like the item or they want the item. Which, uh, again, that's just it's such a simple thing to put into a game, just have the face down there, but... It adds so much because it creates that sort of personal or that relationship to the character instead of uh, you don't think about it so much as I'm just looking at stats and comparing items. You're kind of also feeling like, well, my character wants that. You know, it's it's kind of weird what I'm trying to say here, but it's almost like you have this uh, affection <laughs> for your characters just with little simple things like that. Uh, so there's, I think there's lessons here to be learned for any of you uh, aspiring developers out there. You know, there. There's some stuff that they did absolutely right in this game. So basically what's going on here, true to uh, Terry Gilliam, like uh, approach to plot, I have to dress my characters up as scientists and do all kinds of other things to fool them into thinking we're so intelligent so we can uh, get to the next stage of our journey. And part of that this uh, quest we're on now is getting the uh, the lab coats, and it's just an absolutely hilarious sequence. I won't. I'll just shut up and let you enjoy it. Tighten your belt, sunshine. We got a bird to catch. This is another little mini game. It's a little arcade game. You can play this <laughs> Pong like variant called Zong. It's actually a pretty innovative uh, take on Pong. You know, it makes you wonder, like, where. How do they find time to. <laughs> you know, put all this little stuff in like this. And you kind of have to wonder, too, maybe sometimes it, you do need a producer. You know, somebody that's not really uh, part of the team to come in and say, look, guys, <laughs> you know, the game's not finished yet. There's lots of uh, stuff you need to, to do. Uh, why are we, you know, making a Pong, <laughs> a fully functional Pong game, you know? <laughs> but then again, it's fun, so uh, I don't know. You know, it's, it's uh, I don't know what to think of this. I'd be curious what your opinions are. You know, at, at what point is something just a waste of time? And uh, at what point should you just trust the developer and designer's instincts? Okay, I gotta show you this. Oh my god. Straight out of Monty Python. Just, oh, it's so awesome. 
I, I won't spoil it for you. I just, you know, we got the lab coats, we got all this uh, stuff, and uh, done all the rigmarole. So now we have to deal with the the brain bouncer. It's going to test our intelligence, make sure we're of the right stuff. Extrapolate, if you will, Schoenhausen's theory of caustics by reflection. Oh, that's easy. The catacaustic envelope of a moving line can be determined by. Uh oh. I'm sure I'll get through, but I think you're stuck. Yeah, I think so. Maybe they'll ask me an easy one. Characterize gravity theories in relation to universally coupled scalar fields in the context of Dirac's large number hypotheses. Oh well, I didn't really want to go to Sunder anyway. Don't worry, Mr. Boots. Let him ask his questions. I'll take care of everything, just in <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's go with that one. <laughs> the sorbitol. <laughs> Molecular sieves, inorganic polymers, thermal. Oh, this is, you know, this is classic uh, techno babble. <laughs> and yet, somehow we succeeded. Okay, <laughs> now this should be interesting. <laughs> A Wugan. <laughs> oh. oh, this is. I got tears in my eyes. And this is the second time I've seen this. I've had to like stop recording this two or three times. I just having uh, laughing spasms. There's just something true to life ab about this, you know. This would, this would be me in a. If I was being interviewed for a programmer's job. <laughs> I just nailed that. You know, I've never seen a game do comedy this well. And, and really it's because the comedy, you have to just have that perfect timing. And I guess it's just really hard to, to simulate that. But these guys, they, they just nail it every time. And you know, and the jokes are funny, and then they'll have that little thing at the end. Uh, you know, just a little look on somebody's face or <laughs> body language again. Just uh, make it all, the, all even better. All right, so there's another one of these lengthy 2001 uh, sequences. I'll just skip forward here. This is just a, a few last things I want to show you. You know what's really breathtaking to me is just the, the, the variety of the places that you go. I mean, we've gone we've gone from that sort of uh, cyberpunk-like world to this one, which is totally the opposite: bright blue. Just a, a beautiful place. It's got sort of that Knight, Knights of the Old Republic vibe, you know. And I guess that's uh, you know this game does does even today I think get lost in that shuffle. I mean, people think about Knights of the Old Republic, uh, they think about uh, Deus Ex and System Shock 2. A lot of these games are released around the same time as this. It's really a shame that, that not more was done. They didn't do more to uh, market this and really develop these assets and even. And, you know, support the modding community. They were going to let them create their own planets and all kinds of stuff that just never happened. All right, so I'll just show you this last uh, character here. Yeah, we even got a little Simon. Remember Simon? 
Uh, that kind of makes me sad to think about that because, of course, uh, Ralph Bayer invented that. He just passed away recently. I think you guys are probably aware of that. But we're about to meet the uh, the last character that I got to in this uh, so far. Bad timing, fellas. I'm in the middle of something. In exactly 57 seconds, the particles in this mass super accelerator reach maximum velocity. Working with this high harmonic pulse generator and metaplasmic interferometer to reproduce specific spatial conditions which, if I'm correct, will unlock and activate this test sample of Mistech. So whatever you want is gonna have to wait. Are those Witherspoon time signature drives? <laughs> you know they are, Mr. Matavastros. Yeah, I know you. I practically lived in your museum two summers ago. So, who's the meat puppet? He's my tough guy. Ignore him. Oh, gee, Tell me, thanks. did you calibrate against Gassican frame references? Won't Brownian delineations muddle your Tardion count? Yes, if I was testing for Tardions. But if you're not testing for Tardions, then that would mean... Stand by. Well, that sucks. They're all through my batteries. You're saying Ms. Tech <laughs> oh, from man. a future <laughs> universe? Well, I can't prove it yet, oh, but yes. God. And that's not all. It just gets better Remember and better. Remember the Rudolph anomaly just a few months back? Look at these tachyon readings I took off the Ms. Tech at the time. What are you saying now? That Mistech responds to spatial disturbances? Yes. And the bigger the disturbance, the stronger the glow. Smaller ruptures in the fabric of the universe wouldn't register to the naked eye. The glow would be too faint. But get a strong anomaly nearby, and we'd be seeing fireworks. Uh, Doctor? I don't know. Seems a bit much to swallow. Doctor? I figured you'd say that. Doctor! <laughs> Oh, hell. Oh, no! Oh, what? We gotta get out of here. Out of the lab? Out of the system. We don't have much time. Move! So this is probably one of the most intense sequences in the game so far. I mean, I'm about to get a timer. I think it shows me the timer there. Maybe I have to get out of here first. But uh, remember all those little Simons we had to pass through? Well, you better hope you were writing those down. <laughs> oh man, that I got so nervous with the timer going and everything. It's not that easy to, to get around anyway, and that just made it almost impossible. Nope. Oh. Where is this basement? Okay, let's see, there's a little bunny. So the question is... Can I get all the way down this ridiculously long series of corridors, activating all of these Simons in the right combination to escape? I'll afford it a bit. This was just really, really intense. Of course, you do all that, and you're so flustered at this point that you don't even remember how to get around this this airport terminal. And meanwhile, the timer's just getting lower and lower. <laughs> oh, I got so turned around. You guys have played games with me. You know, I'm not that great with navigating these things anyway. And man, you put a time limit on there. <laughs> I'm just hopeless. Okay, of course, it would be the, the gate at the very top. Oh, I got quite a ways to run. Oh, God, I need a speed boost. <laughs> this is like every trip I've ever taken to an airport, too. <laughs> Your flight is leaving in two minutes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, I might not make this. Oh, that's the up one. Okay, yeah, here's the up one. <laughs> Oh man. 
I don't know what it's like for you guys watching this, but it's just... Oh! It's gate 12, okay. <laughs> Open. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow, well, gained a level. Oh, and here we go. Woo! Engines are warming up. Where is she? Oh my god. Can't we wait for her in space? No kidding. Let's go. We give her one more minute. A bit of foreshadowing. I can't believe you waited for me. Oh no, we're not out of the woods yet. <laughs> I was gonna. Oh man, just uh, just watch. Try denying climate change now. <laughs> oh man, this, this little sequence coming up here is just brutal. Not, not the guys dying in a <laughs> massive, uh, <laughs> massive death, mega death. Nah, this evil ass mini gear. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, this is uh, this was terrible. If this looks easy, uh, it's definitely not. It, this uh, thing kind of moves kind of wonky anyway, and that stuff's moving pretty fast. Now I'll see the music's definitely picked up. Glad they didn't stick with that. Uh, <laughs> Somber stuff. Ooh, that was close. Somber stuff. Oh, damn. Destroy. Well, it took me three or four times. It took me, uh, yeah, three tries to get through this. <laughs> Gives you some idea of how hard these mini games can be. I guess some people just never could get past. Navigations could put. And who knows where that cinder spike put us? I can reroute the auxiliaries to pump up life support, but that'll only buy us about two weeks. With any luck, we'll drift into a populated system before food runs out. What are we gonna turn to then, man? Try not to go crazy. Yeah, there's another great sequence coming up here, but I'm not gonna Is spoil it, it for you. Job? Now, you just now. had to play the game to he see it, it, but it's it's wonderful. So anyway, folks, there you have it. Anachronox. Definitely a flawed gem, shall we say. 
Don't get too hung up on the flaws, though. Like I said, the, big, the biggest complaint most people have is that the game ends on a cliffhanger. So you don't get that resolution that the uh, characters really deserve. I mean, it must just be terrible uh, to get uh, this attached. I mean, I'm not even... I don't even think I'm halfway through the game yet, and I'm already really invested in these characters. But maybe it's not too late. You know, Tom, in my interview with him, has said that he was interested in... He, he would love to do an Anachronox 2. Just hasn't been able to get that IP. And uh, maybe we talk him into doing a Kickstarter. So I'm sure that uh, enough money, you know, and I'm not sure, <laughs> you know, IP can get turned over to him and really do this game justice. But anyway, if you want to play part one, you can get it from GOG. Uh, as of this video, it's only three bucks. Absolute steal at that price. That's uh, It's on special now. So just uh, follow the link in the show notes and you'll soon be enjoying one of those great overlooked masterpieces of computer role-playing games. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with a new interview series with uh, Susan Manley. Lots of great stories about the glorious days of SSI in the Gold Box series of computer role-playing games. So stay tuned for that. I know you're going to enjoy it. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting me at chat, keeping this show going. It's all thanks to you guys. If you would like to support the show, uh, there's lots of ways you can do that. You could just tell a friend. I uh, share uh, some Facebook news about it, a tweet on uh, Twitter. Or uh, you can buy, if you don't have an Acronox yet, uh, why don't you get it from GOG? It's only a $2.99. They got a sale going on. And if you use the link that I put in the show notes, you'll be supporting Matt Chat. No additional cost to you. And you'll get this uh, game to play. Um, or, uh, even better, you can support me on Patreon. Uh, that only takes a couple minutes to set up, and that'll get you access to some bonus material. So, uh, thanks to everyone who has supported me uh, in any way. I really appreciate it. All right, uh, news from the Matt Cave. Uh, not a lot of stuff uh, to talk about. I haven't really been able to uh, keep apprised of that. Uh, we're going into finals week here at St. Cloud uh, State, so it's kind of been kind of crazy. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's one item of interest. Uh, Thamer sent this in. And uh, by the way, if you got news, uh, please uh, forward that to me. Probably the best way is to put it on Facebook, uh, Facebook's Matt Chat page. Uh, that way I can uh, have it all in one place, a little easier to uh, keep track of. But anyway, Thamer sent in some news about the Mountain Blade Warband DLC Viking Conquest. Now, uh, I, was looking at, I was looked at this on Steam, looked at the reviews of it there, and uh, they seem to be overwhelmingly negative uh, at the moment. So I haven't been able to explore you know, what the problem is, but if you're a, a Mountain Blade fan, uh, let me know what you think about this uh, DLC. Is it, worth, is it worth the money? Is it, you know, is it terrible? What, what, what's going on with it? I'd love to hear from you. And then also, uh, you know, I was uh, thinking about Ralph Bear and the Magnavox Odyssey. And I noticed uh, serendipitously a nice review of the shooters available for the Odyssey 2. And that's by uh, Jex the Gamer. So I was really impressed. I didn't even know there were this many shooters for the, for the Odyssey 2. And they, they look pretty, pretty cool. So I thought I'd post a link to that. I'm going to go read that article. All right. So what about that ale of the week? Uh, well, this week I've got a Christmas ale. I always love the uh, the Christmas themed ales. Uh, it kind of gets you into that Christmas spirit, if you will. Uh, this is a handcrafted ale with spices and honey out of Cleveland, Ohio, the Great Lakes Brewing Company. Uh, let's see. Ginger honey. Savor the flavor responsibly. Uh, blah, 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 blah. No chemicals. <laughs> no chemicals were used. Holy hell, how did they make beer without any chemicals? Yeah. 7.5% uh, alcohol by volume. Oh, was, that's actually, uh, that's pretty stout. That's uh, pretty stout. Uh, it really would get you in the uh, Christmas spirit if you uh, drink too many of these. Uh, let's see, don't see... Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. 
Yuletide, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anyway, let's get this open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Christmas ale from the old uh, Great Lakes Brewing Company here in this rather excellent drinking horn. <sighs> I can definitely smell the, the honey in this. It's a very sweet aroma to it. What else did they say was in there? Ginger? I might be able to... Uh... <sighs> yeah, I can't really pretend to smell any ginger, but... I can definitely tell that there's some kind of spices in this that you don't, wouldn't find in an ordinary ale. Uh, so they have uh, tried to Christmas it up a little bit. Anyway, let's uh, give it a taste. Hmm. You get a bit of that barley taste, a little bit of a malt uh, taste to it. Not really liking that first taste. Let me try it again. Maybe uh, maybe just went down wrong. And yes, it's got kind of a, a sweet, sort of barley, uh, cornflakes-like uh, taste to it. You don't really taste the alcohol, though. A bit of a grape uh, taste. Uh, not really very, very good, I have to say. Let me try it one more time here. It's not, <coughs> excuse me, it's uh, not bad. A little bit of a cherry, sweet, uh, it's like it doesn't know what it wants to do, you know. It's just kind of a mishmash of flavors. I'm not really enjoying it too much. It's not the worst. I think I'm going to go two out of five drinking horns on this. Uh, not my favorite Christmas sale uh, by any means. Uh, there's one called uh, Lump of Coal. I haven't been able to find that one anywhere around here. Uh, but that's a, a really good Christmas ale. Also one called Bad Elf. Uh, that's, that's pretty fun. Uh, but anyway, two out of five drinking horns, I think, will do it for this one. Okay, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I found a hell of a quotation uh, from the great Douglas Adams. I think uh, <laughs> all of you folks uh, that program would probably enjoy this, but I think we can all relate to it. Anyway, it goes something like this. A common mistake that people make when trying to design something completely foolproof is to underestimate the ingenuity of complete fools. <laughs> See you guys next week. And I'm so excited, all six of my nipples are tingling.